Margaret, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Doctor's orders, honey. No saturated fat. Ma'am, that doctor is a hack, and he's pathetic. He shouldn't even have a license. Stop listening to the doctor. Jesus. You give me bread. First of all, it's not toasted. Second of all, it's peanut butter without any jam. How do you expect me to swallow this or get it down? How many goddamn times do I have to tell you that? Get your nose out of a cookbook and learn to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Keep talking like that and you'll be making your own sandwiches. What did you say? What was that? According to the Global Health Education Consortium, there are numerous social causes for violence. Poverty, unemployment, illicit drug and alcohol abuse, cultural norms, but these external influences don't explain the root cause of violence. Texas versus Johnson. Ed Johnson was charged with first degree murder after the deaths of his ex-girlfriend and a boy she was seeing. Because of the heinousness of the crimes and the ages of the victims, the prosecutors wanted to push for the death penalty. But because Ed was a few months shy of turning 18, the judge balked. He was released after serving only five years for good behavior. One week after being paroled, Ed was pulled over for a routine traffic stop. And the police found the severed head of a nine-year-old little girl in his trunk. Because of this new discovery, Ed was sentenced to death. Had the state sentenced him after the first violent act where two innocent lives were lost, that little girl would have been spared. The most interesting part is according to his records, there was no history of mental illness or neurological diseases, so was he born violent? Ask yourself that. Now, without understanding where violence originates, it's impossible to rehabilitate, let alone prevent future violent acts. Well, what if violence is so ingrained to our society our American culture. Excuse me, sir? That outbursts are inevitable. There's no escaping it. I refuse to believe that we're far from stopping the epidemic of violence sweeping through our country. Even with a system in place that just trades death for death. OK, so are controlled executions an act of violence or an act of mercy for the loved ones of the victims? Isn't the act of killing always violent? Is it? I want you guys to think about that when you pick a case. Look for the hidden motives and clues that were missed. And had they not been missed, would the tragedy have been prevented? And remember to be objective. That is the key to get an accurate and impartial read on the situation, okay? Class dismissed. And you are? Ben Woods, assistant district attorney. I'd like for you to consult on a case for me. His name is Jack Shea, set for execution in 72 hours. With it being an election year, the governor's under extra pressure to reevaluate the state's position on capital punishment. Well, the nuances of the law aren't exactly my specialty. I'm not here for legal advice, miss. Doctor. Doctor, pardon me. Are you watching the news? National Focus was on the protest that's got the governor backed into a corner. Now, if this execution goes forward as scheduled without an official review, the governor won't stand a chance of serving another term. I just want you to talk to him. Hmm? Give him your professional opinion. Consider it your civic duty. Maybe, just maybe, you'll save a life. My card and my number is in there. Maybe if you stop lying around, Leo. <laughs> Get up, lazy bones. It's time for adventuring. Does that mean I'll have to stop at Vincent's? No. Yeah, Mommy! Hi, baby girl. Shouldn't you be in bed? 
Grandma said that I could watch one more show on TV before bed. She did now, huh? Yep. All the animals on the show live together at the zoo. Aww. Can we go to the zoo, Mommy? Well, I tell you what. How about you go upstairs, brush your teeth, and you be a good girl for Grandma all week, and then I will take you next weekend, okay? Go on up, brush your teeth, and I'll tuck you in. Can Grandma read me a story first? Please, please, please. Oh, I think I can manage that. Come on, Grandma, let's go. Thanks, Mom. Uh, no problem. <laughs> oh. I left you some dinner by the stove. Thank you. Good night, Mommy. I love you. Good night. I love you. I thought you quit three months ago. Allie was bummed that you didn't make dinner. I know she was, you know, just couldn't get here. But thank you for picking her up from school today. No problem. Oh, come here. Thank you. Don't stay up too late, kiddo. I won't. Good night, Mom. Good night, sweetheart. Hey, Ben. It's Dr. Tyler. Dr. Tyler. I'm in. I'll do it. I have a few conditions. Our session needs to be private, so I don't want to be in a standard interview room. We should be somewhere where he feels comfortable, where he can at least move around. I mean, we're not going to get anywhere if I can't earn his trust.
You need a hand with that, Doc? I prefer to be addressed as Dr. Tyler or Amanda. Have a seat, please. State your name for the record. Jackson Michael Shea. Inmate 78011. There's a point to all this, right? Doc, seeing as how the sand in my hourglass has just about run out, I don't see this benefiting me very much. My plan is to get to the root cause of your excessive violence. You mean the newspaper and magazine story is calling me a monster? I've read your file. And what? You read some papers. Some file a prison hack too stupid to make it on the outside wrote about me after he showed me some ink blots. You read that shit and think you're inside my head? Doc, you don't know a fucking thing about me. You're right, Jack. I don't know a fucking thing about you. And if I did, I wouldn't be here wasting my time or yours. Would you like me to leave? Ah! Tick tock! Ah! Mm. Tick tock, tick tock. So what's a pretty little thing like you doing here? You draw the short straw? It's about the violence, Jack. If I can pinpoint the time, the place, the cause, then maybe I can at least help stop the cycle. Now we have some very important decisions to make, don't we? Let's start with- With my mother's tit milk. Did I get enough as an infant to properly nourish me for life in civilized society? Did you? Doc, you ready to hear a story? It was the summer of 85. We had no money, so we had to move into my Uncle Mike's single wide. Sometimes, when I close my eyes, I can still smell that musty trailer. The bigger bears try to pretend that they came around the corner to look for a friend. That they came around the corner to look for a friend. And they try to pretend that nobody cares whether you walk on the lines or on the squares. Fun for you, Cynthia. Thanks, Mike. Okay, well, your Uncle Mike's gonna help you finish reading, okay, book? Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, Uncle Mike. Ready for your birthday bedtime story? talk about God, 
Well, where was God when my uncle was sneaking into my bedroom late at night telling me bedroom stories I didn't want to hear? Everything's gonna be okay, my son. You're in the presence of the Lord now. Tell me what happened. How did your mother react to the news? Not the way you'd think. Mrs. Shea, I'm... I really wish I were here under different circumstances. I'm sorry. It involves your brother and your son. Well, what is it? Has... Has your son been acting different lately? Anything strange about his behavior? I mean, my, my, my son is a good boy. Yes, he is. I don't know how to say this, so I'll just say it. We believe that your brother has been inappropriately touching your son. Inappropriately touching my son? Your brother's been molesting your son, Mrs. Shea. That is not true. I'm sorry. That is not true. I don't know where you got that, but... That ain't true. Mrs. Shea, your son told me. I'm sorry. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. I said, that's a lie. That is a goddamn lie. You're making up stories. Don't you come in here with your lies and your stories. You need to go. You need to get the hell out of here. You need to get the hell out of my house. I said, get the hell out of my house! Yeah, come yeah, in here with your lies you. and your oh, stories. I know what you're talking about. How did you do, my boy? I was the victim, but I may as well have been the perpetrator from the way she reacted. I said to get out of my house! I'm sorry. May God be with you. This is my house! It's my house! Come in here saying things like that to me! Cynthia Shea drank herself to death pretty soon after. Guilt, maybe. What do you think? Hmm? Destined from a tender age to be a criminal, or...? Well, it's too soon in the process for me to form an opinion on that. What exactly is your process? I know that you're familiar with the flag system, so I am looking for signs that stand out and recognizing the red flags early enough so that the violence can be stopped. So, let's talk about your uncle. I lived with him until about the time I was 17. After I got too old, Uncle Mike turned his attentions to the kid of the girl he'd been seeing. She didn't suspect a damn thing. Seeing him chase after that little boy, something just snapped. No. No. Ah. I 
felt illuminated and free. Free? It was the first time in my life I was ever in control over the events that guided me. Nothing's more freeing than that. You know, you could have stopped him without putting him in the hospital. You chose to fly into a rage. Don't you get it, Doc? We're all just caged animals. With animal instincts. ongoing story will be reported as it becomes available. God, I miss you. Looking at law and order, the impending execution of Texas inmate Jackson Shea shines a harsh light on capital punishment in the Lone Star State. Due to vocal public opinion on both sides of the issue, the governor has announced a final review of the possibility for a stay of execution in Mr. Shea's case under the authority of Dr. Amanda Tyler, a noted criminal psychologist. The governor has stated that Dr. Tyler's findings will likely be a key factor in determining what action the Texas Department of Criminal Justice will take. You ready to start, Jack? The judge gave me a choice. Either go to military school or go to juvie. I breeze through basic training, get selected for sniper school because I have 2010 vision and I aced marksmanship. Well, your file says that you actually got kicked out of military school. That resulted in parole after 18 months. There's consequences for our actions, Jack. Action. Reaction. Action. You put your uncle in the hospital. Reaction. You get sentenced to 18 months. 18 months served 12. So this is what? An example of the system failing? You think you're above the law? Do you ever cheat the insurance companies, Doc? Fill a patient for cash and put in a claim for it? Us in the know call that double back billing. Now the first line of defense against the Y3K bug, checking each machine to make sure it will work properly in the year 2000. Maria, could you give us two fingers of the good stuff? Yes, ma'am. I met Marty in prison. Let's just say he was someone in the know. Once I got out, he offered me a job because, let's face it, who else is gonna hire a con? Listen to me, kid. I'm talking about doctors, lawyers, dentists, large amounts of cash that don't get reported to the IRS, won't be reported to the cops if it comes up missing. They hide their money in a coat closet in their office or in a shoebox under the bed. There was this one lawyer he had 25,000 fucking dollars in a coffee can that he could suck in a microwave. There's a point somewhere here, right? Yeah, this is the point. That dickhead parole officer I have, he got me a night job cleaning office buildings. Hey, this guy, he's got to replace his shop back on the second floor. The hell I care for him. Sign the damn law. You're available for several hours. One of these buildings is a gynecologist who gives a discount to women who pay cash, and then he bills their insurance company.
He's got a safe in his closet that is bursting out the fucking seams. Well, how much money are we talking about? You won't know until we open it. This doctor must be some kind of idiot. He buys himself a wall safe, but he doesn't put it in the wall. Get the hammer, kid? What are you doing? Get the chisel. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Now just go down the sides. It's soft there. Come on. Yes. You won't know until we open it, but I can tell you this. If someone finds it necessary to hide an unwired safe in their office, generally speaking, it's for a very good reason. Damn. <laughs> Just like milk in a tit, kid. Come on, pack it up, get the fuck out of here. Meet me back at my place for breakfast. <laughs> Listen to me, you do what I say, and both of us could make out like bandits. Hey. The truth is. You have to sign out. I'm both. Sorry. I grew up poor. But there I was, staring at more money than my mama made in a year. <laughs> $16,400. Go ahead, take your half. Half? Yeah, we're partners. Take half. That's what partners do, right down the middle. <laughs> Come on, take it, take it, take it. As long as you follow the rules, we're golden. Number one rule, you gotta stay innocuous. Don't let them see you coming. You know, the cops in robbery, they're looking for the asshole who's walking down the street with a shiny new Rolex the day after a big heist. And once you're pegged, you're pegged. I mean, kid, you could buy yourself a new pair of shoes once in a while, but you go walking down Broadway in a silk Italian suit, you'll be in the line for the rest of your life. We on the same train here, kid? Yeah. And I'd say that train left the station. <sighs> you gotta stop drinking coffee. Open that up. It's gonna put a hole in your stomach. It's the worst thing for your coffee. It's bad for your nerves. This will make it a little better, but you really should stop that. I'm your friend, you know what I mean? We got a big future. It's the crime. Who says crime doesn't pay? <laughs> <laughs> Salud. I was a student, Marty the teacher. After our third job together, Marty put me to the test. Find a mark of my own. So I checked oh, out a few you. local dentists. Hey, Doc, I don't have an insurance card. Do you give discounts for cash? Afraid not. Insurance and cards only. Um. Open wide. Seems like you got a bad cavity. By the third dentist, my gums were so swollen that my teeth felt like they were ready to fall out. But I had the cleanest mouth in the city. I can't believe you'd be so stupid. How many times can you get your teeth cleaned in one day? Here we are. Dentist. Hello, do you offer uh, senior and cash discounts? Oh, yes, sir, we do. Oh, you do? You do offer discounts for cash? Too right, we do. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Would you care to make it <laughs> What's the moral of the story, kid? Let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. What's this? That? It's a Christmas present. It's almost one of those too-good-to-be-true type of deal. We don't know what's in the fucking safe until we open it, right? Come on. Uh, 
I can't sit here. I hate that couch. You know, I found a rat in there once. Why didn't you tell me that before I sat on it? Before you slept on it. <laughs> Leo Frank, attorney at law. The tip came from an old friend of Martin's who was still doing time and needed a stake when he got out. Martin agreed to put away 20% for him. Right on time. All right, we gain access to room maintenance door on the side of the building. Let's go on. Where's the safe? There it is, behind the bar. Just like he said. Now, why would you go through all the trouble with a safe like that if you're not gonna wire it? You don't hardwire something that doesn't exist. You sure about this old man? Shit. What? Battery's dead. Are you kidding me? Do you have any extras? I mean, there's one in the flashlights. Do those work? No, this takes AAA. I think I found something. Get out of here with that. It's disgusting. Oh. You don't know where that's been. You know decency? Let's watch the door. Wrap it up, Marty. Okay. Did you know the motion for discovery means the prosecutor and the defendant must exchange all evidence and information pertinent to a case? $660,000 divided by two minus 20% is a great night's work, man. Fuck. What? What? I don't know, Marty. It's just, I know when something is too good to be true. What's your point? My point is that there's not that many safes lying around with this kind of cash in it that aren't for something special. What's the matter with you? Are you mental? I'm Come on. I'm serious. Marty, I will take the money back for you tonight if you want. Kid, what are you, what are you talking about? We can't put it back. In. Take the money and buy a condo on the beach somewhere and play shuffleboard with the old ladies. Just get out of town. OK, OK, I'll make you a deal. Give me one week to tie up some loose ends. And then I've got this friend in Texas. I was going to introduce you to him. But we'll take the money, we'll leave town. One week is all I ask. Okay. Robert, mm. Mr. Belmont. Yeah. This is Captain William Wilder, robbery division. This is Frankie. I got plenty of cops on payroll. What do I need another one for? The captain's got a business proposal for you. Look, Mr. Belmont. My wife wants an entirely new kitchen. My sons want an entertainment room in the basement. And I want my own bathroom so I don't have to look at my wife's shit hanging on the shower. Do I look like an interior decorator to you? 
No. Then why do I give a fuck about your wife's shit hanging in the bathroom? Information. Bob, hear him out. So you're gonna pay for these things I want, Mr. Belmont. Plus a little bonus in exchange for the man who robbed your safe. You better be very careful, Mr. Uh, police Captain, or you might find yourself missing in your own precinct. Robert. Yeah. The man is an old school thief. The kind that has steel for balls. Second story guy. Leo comes to me after your safe was robbed, and I do a little quiet poking around. My contacts tell me that he's living in a basement in the department store. You want to know the address? kitchen does your wife like? tough guy? I don't know. I swear I don't know. Ah, Jesus! Search the place. you into hell hell may be a bit extreme well what would you call it huh purgatory mm, anticipation you know that intense feeling you get right before you jump into something that you know will change your life forever i guess purgatory is a good a word as any Put your hands on the steering wheel. Handcuff yourself to the steering wheel. Ford. You're gonna tell me who murdered Martin Big. I need a name. I can't. I need a name. I can't. You kill me. Think about me. I will kill you right here, right now, unless you give me a fucking name. Robert Belmont. Let go! Give me the key! 
Robert Belmont. Big time loan shark and businessman. He wasn't hard to track down. I started moonlighting as a chauffeur. Driving the son of a bitch. Learned his routine. I even picked him up from his mistress's place. I always had a drink waiting for him. And one night, I slipped in a little something extra. There he is. Morning, sunshine. I was worried I put a little too much in your drink. Untie me, you piss ass fuck. There's no need to be rude. Okay. I. You proved your point. Now untie me and tell me what you want. You got balls, kid. I'll give that to you. You know, you may just be the guy that I've been looking for. You know, the guy that's going to take my business to the next level. <laughs> I failed to see what's so funny. You're alone, tied to a chair. What about this situation leads you to believe you're in a position suitable for bargaining? OK. Untie me and walk away. We'll just let this one go. You're not paying attention, Bobby. The only reason you're still alive is I haven't killed you yet. How much? And we'll give you this. You have fine taste in whiskey. How much? Ah. Stay with me, Bobby boy. Stay with me. One million. Mm -hmm. You remember this, don't you? You arrogant fuck. This belong to my partner. You didn't know the money was yours. You could have let that one go. Your partner was a degenerate fuck, all right? He stole from me. What am I supposed to do? Just pat him on the back? Fuck that. OK, all right, I'm sorry. Two million. You talk too much, Bob. <clears throat> I'm not interested in your money. He tortured my friend. You tortured him and let him bleed to death like a pig. This is for Marty. I gave that bastard a preview of what's waiting for him in hell. Belmont got what he deserved, but I want to make one thing real clear to you, Doc. I didn't commit murder. I performed an execution. There's a difference. Bullshit. I don't believe that, and neither do you. You talk a lot, but what can you really speak for, hmm? Can you speak for me? I want to ask you a question. Tick! Talk! When it's my time, Will you care about me then, hmm? That moment when the needle, the very first one, slips into my body and relaxes my nerves. Are you gonna watch me? Are you gonna watch me or are you gonna turn and look away? When the second needle freezes my lungs, are you gonna scribble scrabble in your notepad for future reference? And when that third needle stops my heart and they pronounce my body dead, are you in anguish 
over my death? Or are you going to rejoice that the law of your land was fulfilled? Neither. You ever see anyone die, Doc? You ever watch as the light fades out of someone's eyes as they just drift away into nothing? It's not about me. This is about you. This whole day has been about you. Your bullshit cocky attitude isn't gonna work with me, Doc. It's not about me. I don't, I don't fucking care if it's about you. Fuck your questions. Fuck you. I'm done. Not playing your fucking games anymore. You're done playing games when I tell you. Got it? Any evidence should have been destroyed in the fire, so I figured it was time to leave the city. You know who owns this place? Mr. Charlie Rose. Keep the change. I found an address in Marty's Texas travel book. And then there she was. She was the most beautiful woman I'd ever laid my eyes on. Good evening. Hello, Billy. I believe we have a guest. Right over there. Uh-uh. Only your sweetie. I'm sorry, have we met? Not exactly. Olivia. Jackson. Shay. Yes. Martin Bear was a mutual friend. Oh, don't worry. I'm not a cop. But it was quite a job you did on Belmont. Who says that was me? Mm -hmm. I have my sources. Well, I don't like being followed. Noted. Dance with me. I knew you were too pretty to be a cop. <laughs> I didn't know Martin, but my father, very close to him. Who was your father? He's a businessman. What kind of business? Acquisitions. But you know where to find me. 
You've seen this place? Somebody new walks into town. I hear about it. Besides, little Billy over there has a sweet spot for me. Wanna take a ride? Lead the way. Daughter's awake. Daddy, meet Jack Shay. Jack. Yeah. Meet Charlie. Mr. Rose. Well, Marty never said you were such a city slicker. Is that gonna be a problem? No, not a problem unless you make it that way. You all didn't do nothing together now, did you? Oh, Daddy. Oh, come on. I'm just playing with you. Come on over here and chat for a while. Ladies, why don't you go on inside and cool off a bit? Aw, baby. Hal? Yes, sir. Ladies, out of the pool. Now. You know, I, I like to harness the energy of youth. You want a beer? Look, Mr. Rose, the only reason I'm here is because Marty said he had a friend in Texas, and that's it. Marty. Marty was thick as a brick, but he was a tremendous judge of character. Now, from appearance, you look like you're up to the mark, but it's what's underneath that concerns me if you crack when the heat gets cranked up. You gotta keep a low profile. I've been my entire life, and I never got so much as a parking ticket. I only do outside horses and oil, and I don't shit where I live, if you catch my drift. I spend a whole year, an entire year, on a single project, but the payoff is always worthwhile. And I don't touch nothing unless it'll fetch at least five million US. I use a crew, and I rotate who's in charge. Olivia there sometimes acts as another guy when she's not causing chaos. You know, I, I never hire men unless they're Texas men. I just don't trust them. But Marty was a brother to me, so I'm not gonna throw you out. But you're gonna have to prove yourself. What do you think there, blue eyes? get started. How does 75 mil sound? Lekowitz, how are y'all doing today? Very well, thank you. Mr. Beaker's ready for you. Flynn will be taking you upstairs. Please follow me. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Simon Beaker was the president of the largest bank nobody ever heard of. Beaker handled overseas financial transactions. How the money flowed, just none of it flowed to Beaker. Mr. Beaker, your client's garage. Good afternoon. Welcome. 
Please, have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> what can I do for you? We represent Mr. Rose's interests. Yes, Mr. Beaker. Sherry, can you send Paul in, please? Right away. Um, I, uh, I didn't expect you so soon. The timeline's moved up. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Beaker, we know the vault's codes change daily. Now, your men, they show up at 11 p.m., not a second sooner or later. The codes were golden. Anything after that, we're not gonna do business. Now, Mr. Beaker, we know that there's 75 million in bonds in that vault. 75 mil sounds good. But this time, I'm the leading man. No, ma'am, you are not. Oh, yes, sir, I am. I beg your pardon, Miss Hibb, but you are not. Daddy! Okay, you want to wheel and deal, Missy? You take Hal. Got you, boss. I'll take real good care of him. No, I'm not taking Hal. Do we have a deal? Mr. Rose's cut is 10 cents on the dollar. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, that's understood. All right, then. Pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> OK. Deal. No how. Cheers. Cheers. I was happy, and it seemed like, just for once, God smiled down on me. You know how much I love you. I love you so much. I love you forever. Got a job. And I need a driver. Yeah, I can drive. How much? The usual amount. What time y'all need me there? A couple days. Keep your phone on. I'll be in touch. It's done. Sometimes you gotta keep the training wheels on, even though they wanna roll alone. case the place. We had blueprints, guard schedules, and Charlie even had a duplicate of the security system made for me to practice. We had all the bases covered. Okay. Well, they were dressed for a funeral. So you brought your boyfriends. Did you bring the codes? That's why we're here, Jack. And let's get to work. Hey, keep an eye on the scanners, all right? Make sure all the edges are sealed.
This is Beaker's private floor. There's no cameras here. There you go. Beaker put the security cameras in the vault on loop. Nice. We've got an hour, then Beaker will be here to get his cut. Codes. If even one of those numbers is wrong, half the police department will show up outside. Listen, little lady. I got it from Beaker himself. Wrote the numbers down exactly the way he told me. Pressure changes things. Makes a man write a six instead of a nine. Not Beaker. Man's ice. I was talking about you. Me too about done bickering. Yo, what's it doing? It's synchronized, the alarm. It's deciphering codes and stages. Each stage has a different color. What the hell are we waiting for? Beaker's in the van. We'll split the bonds up there. You know, something's been bothering me. Now, why would Beaker show up here in person and put himself at risk? Jack, I can only help you. You are not leaving Jack. This is awesome. I'm getting paid, motherfucker. <laughs> Jack. Oh, Jack, you out there, son? Listen, I got a confession to make, pal. Your wife whispered in my ear that she wants to suck my dick. You like that? Ha! I'll make you a deal. You give me what's mine, and I'll let you go. What's supposed to be like this, Jack? Oh, yeah? How was it supposed to be? You kill us and take the bonds? You got it. Hey, get the fuck out there. <laughs> nice shot, Jack. Too bad it wasn't me. Listen, fuck Beaker. Why should he get the money? Me and you, we split the money. 50-50. How's that sound? Sounds like bullshit! Hey, Jack! After I kill you, I'm gonna fuck that little whore of yours. You give me what's mine. Oh, shit. 
Yeah. Hear that? Oh, we're both gonna go to fucking prison. <laughs> you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't shoot a man in the back, would you? Yes, I would. Gun! We've got a gun! Jeez, have you got a situation here? Call for backup! Margaret, don't bring it up again. Just tell the guys there's a ladder in the garage or uh, we'll rent theirs, because they'll charge you rent, and have them climb up on the roof and don't tell them we don't have insurance. No, I'm not gonna discuss with you now. I'll do it when I get home. Warden. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you for your service to your client. But you are done here, sir. Thank you. I love the word barrister. I always have. And you have the best job in America when you become a judge. Because every day you get to go to work with a chance to be fair. Thanks again, Warden. Good day, sir. See, it's part of my job. And your job is trying to be Spider-Man and climb up to second stories and do bad things. And you got caught. Would you rather have the water warmer or colder? Strip. Full frontal. Very good. You'll do. You don't need to cover it, but we couldn't be shocked by anything you'd have. Hello, son. Sir. You? How are you today, sir? Good, sir. Good. How about you? Good, ready to get out of here. Very good, sir. didn't work. Maybe you're just rude. You don't have manners. When one of your betters is an outside in front of the bars, you stand up, turn around, and look him in the goddamned eye. <clears throat> That's more like it. You know what I need from you? Your attention. And I'm gonna demand it every time I look in your fucking eyes. How are you enjoying our fine facility? I hope it's up to your standards. Is it to your liking? Or have you seen better? Or would you rather be in a hole underground? Can you hear me? Because it's important you hear me. Every time I've ever looked in your face, even back in my office, you never took your eyes off me. I'm not that fucking attractive, bud. You always give me that cold stare. It don't mean shit to me. You're not gonna scare me down. You understand that, don't you? I don't care how bad you think you are. You're not as bad as the executioner.
fish. Got my Tonys? Do you know what's happening here? Do you know what's happening? Oh, fuck! stay you know why I stay because I like bad guys because they don't want to be bad guys and a lot of them think we're the bad guys and I'm a bad guy and I like criminals professionals at what they do I particularly like the second story man because he's got to be athletic he's got to be agile he's got to think you put all that ingenuity together and you wonder, why can't we all just get along? What's your proposition, Warden? You know the difference between a, uh, a criminal and a lawman? One lives rent-free. Three meals a day, a bed. The other one Can't even pay his rent. And our uncle, who lives back there on the East Coast, doesn't pay people like me shit. I'm thinking of retiring soon. And I got three daughters. So you do the math. You know what the real difference between crooks and lawmen is, Warden? Try me. What side of the bars they're on? That's clever. With a mind like that, you should be nowhere near an institution like this. You want to stay here the rest of your life, or you want to be out there? You want your girl running around outside the walls of this prison, look like she does? Without supervision? I don't think so. Now, in your own mind, are you better in or out? Because that's what we're talking about. So let's make a deal, and you can take a hike, and I can quit being a fucking warden. If you're gonna make a deal with me, you're gonna shake my hand. Gordon's proposition was simple. Some snitch had let it slip that a drug deal was going down by the border. Having me get the cash kept his hands clean. And in return, 
I got a get out of jail free car with a new identity and a second chance at life. And lucky for me, there was a good hearted woman waiting. You okay? You don't have to do this. We can go away. Start again. We just have to do it someplace else. Warden. Yeah. Yeah, we're here. We're packing in. Just stay with him until the deal's done. You understand that, right? Got it. You better be the shot you say you are, boy. I can't see a goddamn thing. No one else needs to get hurt. You just do exactly what I say. Drop your guns, throw your keys, and keep walking. Walk away, and don't look back. You only killed two, goddammit. There's no need to kill the rest. I'll say what is needed, convict. Drugs weren't part of the deal. Your deal, not ours. Yeah. Water. They checked into the motel you got him. That's good. You know what the story is. Yeah. You know what you have to do. Got it? Copy that. Warden's men took the drugs, but I held on to the money. He'd meet me at the hotel in the morning, and I'd exchange his money for my new life. In the morning, we'll just give this money to Morton, and we're done. Well, I don't know. This whole thing feels off. Promise me this is the last one. I can't lose you. And one can do. 
vision. Will you spend the rest of your life with me? Looks in the light. Oh. It sparkles. And it sparkles like your eyes. <laughs> I love it. I hope so. <laughs> you spoil me. When all this is done, we're gonna have enough money. Start over again. We're gonna have a house. Maybe two baby boys. I'll even retire, you know, be a postman, like a regular old job or something. Just to be able to wake up every morning next to you. What do you think about that, babe? I love you so much. I'm glad you do. Thank you, baby. Baby, get down! Okay. Olivia, we need to stay awake. Just a little longer. We're gonna get that house I promised you. And so it goes. This was good. This was a lot of progress. And tomorrow we'll get to the underlying. Tomorrow I have a date with a real doctor. <laughs> you know what the worst part is? Hmm. Nobody's going to be there to see me off. Nice talking with you, Amanda. You too, Jack.
I am telling you, this is one nasty son of a bitch. He hires young, he pays more than all his competitors, and when he gets his hooks in him, he doesn't let go. Track all his analysts. Uh, even his guys down there in the trenches, they're bound to make a mistake, and when they do, we will be ready. We will be ready. Good work, Mr. Carrot. Thank you. Good work. <clears throat> Jeff, give us a minute. Uh, yeah, sure. No problem. Thank you. Dr. Tyler. There you go. What do you got for me? <clears throat> you can't be serious. I'm serious. Texas versus Johnson. Okay. You claim you wanna save lives, doctor. Hmm. You, 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 you preach fighting the good fight. You wave your flag of justice around your lecture hall like some avenging angel. But this, this is not a case study. This is not about theorizing, glorifying, or grandstanding. Dr. Tyler, this is about paying a debt. And not just a debt to the families of the victims, but to society, righting a terrible wrong and preventing future wrongs, protecting the innocent. And you, of all people, should understand that since your husband was murdered. Am I correct? Yeah, you're correct. My husband was murdered. So let me ask you a question. Shoot. What if this time, perpetuating the cycle and continuing down the wrong path and protecting a broken system isn't what's best for society? The system's far from broken, doctor. We're traveling down a path humanity's been navigating since the dawn of society. Law and order, crime and punishment, tick for tack. Without this system in place, we will surely be living in a constant state of uh, hypersensitivity. Wouldn't you say? No, we've moved beyond that. We are past reacting off of just our primal instinct. Oh, we've, moved, we've moved beyond. OK, Doc. OK. Look who you're talking to here. Hmm? You're gonna sit here and tell me this, even though an educated black man in a three-piece suit right here in the good state of Texas can't run down the street without possibly being mistaken for a criminal and shot down like a dog, that we have evolved. I'd have to argue against that, doctor. Ah. It's a delicate balance. Punish too harshly, you have a revolt. Don't punish enough, you have a anarchy. See, the very fear of violence keeps violence at bay. By not responding to violence with violence, we take away that fear. And we take away the very thing that keeps our system intact. So no, doctor, our system is not broken. We are not headed down the wrong path. I'm doing my job for society. Whether you are or not is yet to be seen. What about compassion and empathy and mercy? mercy. We're all just pieces on the board, Doctor. We're just pieces on the board. Yeah, well, at the end of the game, the king and the pawns go in the same damn box. Do you want to help me? I'll take it to the governor myself. Time to go.
thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Nobody's gonna be there to see me off. Violence. What is the cause? To truly understand the nature of violence, we need to look beyond the individual. We need to look at the culture of violence that permeates our society. And we also need to look at the way we punish those who commit acts of violence. Because when we answer violence with violence and trade death for death, all we're doing is perpetuating a vicious cycle. But what if someone you love was murdered? Would you feel that answering violence with violence is appropriate? I believe I would feel that in the moment, but I wouldn't want their deaths avenged by a cruel and capricious system.